My roadmaps are really simple. So what is visible on this roadmap? The first thing is that there are no deliverables, there are product outcomes. Product outcomes might be OKR that we get for the product team. And below this, there are customer needs or customer outcomes. So we have product outcomes at the top that will drive the business results and customer needs that we are going to address. OKRs create focus to explain why what we are going to do is important and also define how we will measure the success and what the success means. The problem with Gantt chart is that it's, it's often used to create a fiction that we have control, very detailed level granular control over the future. And making commitment cause, just because you are pressure or making details, plans and with dates and uh, different deliverables. It feels safe, but in most cases it, it causes much bigger problems in the future. <laughs> it's just a wise thing to do and not to, to make those commitments. Having a constraint like a deadline provokes creativity so that we start thinking, okay, how we can achieve this goal, what we can do and start engaging in the discussions. Hi, I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome. Welcome to a serious Scrum interview series where I interview my colleagues from Serious Scrum and we talk all things Scrum and Agile. Today I have with me one of my product management gurus, Pavel Huren. Hey, Pavel. Hi, thanks for the invitation. You're welcome. I'm probably one of the few people who can pronounce your name, right? <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> yeah, Pavel is also from Poland and he, uh -huh. he's actually living in Warsaw, right? Right. Pavel shares tips and insights on product management and you can find him on Substack and on LinkedIn. Check uh, the description for the links. And today I invited Pavel to talk about roadmaps. And that's a topic that I am very passionate about because I am now having some struggles on that. Today we'll talk everything roadmap. Roadmaps, Gantt charts, uh, what formats we use, what tools do you use, how deadlines work with the roadmaps and the quarterly or the horizon, what are the horizons of the roadmaps that you would say are the best? Let's see where the talk takes us. So I would like to first ask you, what do we need to get started? What format would you recommend, tools to use? I think now in order to get started, we probably need to know where we are, uh, we, we want to go. So mm -hmm. in some overarching vision of our product, we need a strategy, what we do, what we don't do, what choices uh, we are going to make. Uh, when working with the product. And I like to work with the goals <laughs> in Scrum's product goal. It might be an OKR that defines some some outcomes that we can measure. And uh, this is the base for, for a roadmap for me. Okay. And if you do OKRs, which are very popular right now, right? Everybody does OKRs apparently. So what is the cadence usually? Do you, how do you do them? Could you just briefly say before we go to the roadmap? Yeah, maybe I, I can tell how it should be done. Uh, it's okay. done a little bit different in one company, but how it should be done is that uh, if you read Radical Focus by Christina Wodke, she argues that uh, you should have only one OKR. So one OKR for and the whole company, if the company has a multiple business models, you can have more than one. And then the OKRs for the teams should be derived for the departments should be derived from, from this primary top goal, top OKR. Mm -hmm. We plan them quarterly. So every quarter there is a conversation about what's the most important for the company. If there are more initiatives, because not everything can be done in one quarter, uh, we split them and and sequence like in a backlog so that we can mm -hmm. tackle one one goal after another for me they are a way to create focus on what is important uh, for the long term strategy for uh, for the things that are not urgent so it's not a fire that just uh, started uh, but something we, we would like to focus on so OKRs create focus to explain why what we are going to do is, is important and also define uh, how we measure the success and what the success means, which are key results. Okay, I would love to go into that because that's also something that I, I, I sometimes struggle, sometimes not, depending on what the OKRs actually are. You know, it's hard to have mm -hmm. them really outcome focused. I'm, I saw so many OKRs that were basically tasks. Yeah, it it, it happens quite often when people uh, convert key results into OKRs for 
<laughs> on the lower level and this is not how it should work so, yeah yeah but that's also you know we have i think as humans somehow we have a problem to structure a goal that's like outcome based as opposed to just do this complete this task finish mm -hmm. the work on whatever initiative there is and people really struggle to put it as something okay what do you want to achieve how can we achieve it because if you say complete what does it actually mean like you know so mm -hmm. th that's why i have a lot of uh how but maybe that's for another conversation so let's say somehow we have the perfect okay rc in our company you know given that there are some other departments that depend on the usually the engineering work so we have marketing and we have operations they need to, to contact the clients they need to tell them something like yeah you know we are preparing this big marketing splash for mm -hmm. march how can we make sure that we actually deliver by March. So I would mm -hmm. like to understand what's your horizon for a roadmap? Mm -hmm. I usually try to use now the next lighter roadmap. So for me now is what we are working in the current quarter. The next is the next quarter and later is everything else. So but I have never seen a detailed plan. So you also mentioned uh, Maria uh, Gantt charts. I have never seen a detailed plan longer than one quarter. That that mm -hmm. that's to the test of time. So usually those those plans are one week after we define them, they are obsolete. So, yeah, that's uh, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I read your article: five tips for PMs that will make working mm -hmm. with deadlines a breeze which I love the title uh, I, I will also link the article in the description and and you write it there that um, it's like hard to have but I'm actually happy that you mentioned that a quarter is still okay you know because I was like afraid oh my god will that make a quarter is a lot uh, already right but at least we have some is. kind of a mm -hmm. plan in place yeah, I know that you interview also other people from Serious Scrum community, and um, one of them is probably, I don't know if you will be talking to him, Freddie Carlson, and he wrote uh, some time ago an article about the deadline as an enabling constraint. Mm -hmm. So I think as long as we do not define the the exact output features that we want to to, to have in, in this quarter, but we have a goal and... Uh, um, the team is uh, empowered to find a way how to achieve this goal, this this outcome that we care about. So having a constraint like a deadline might provoke creativity, so that we start thinking, okay, how we can achieve this goal, how we can, what we can do, and uh, people people start engaging in 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 the discussions. Yeah, from my experience, if we have a goal that is it's not detailed. You do not have exact outcomes, uh, exact uh, outputs, but you, for example, say that we want to increase customer engagement uh, or customer satisfaction score by 20%. This is something that you can work on during the quarter and you can always also use it as a as your product goal for, for this quarter. For me, this is perfectly fine as long we as long we talk about outcomes and as long we do not, do not focus on these tasks that, that people have to do. I understand that. And I sometimes I was thinking about it. Like, yeah, if you have an app that you yourself can use and all the developers can use and you have you want to empower the team and tell them we want to increase the engagement by 30 mm percent -hmm. too. Yeah. Right. And we are like, oh, yeah, I know, because I know the app. It's easy for me to think about mm -hmm. ways to do it. But if we have a product that's more complex and it's really hard for a PM to get a hold of the problem and you need marketing input you need mm -hmm. uh, opst input because people just don't use it on their own because it's a re let's say it's a retail thing you know mm -hmm. you don't use it because it's for the retailers it's not even for the end user so you need to really understand how they work how the marketeers work and so on it's really hard to just give people this outcome and give uh, and let them find the way so sometimes you are forced to create stories for them and sorry but who is who is you <laughs> in, in your you in your, the comp i yeah, would say like the management the company? or some yeah like management so basically mm -hmm. I, I think it's you <laughs> like the pm needs to matter. yeah usually it's in their hands of course they work with the uxer to do some kind of research they work with the other stakeholders to understand mm -hmm. but they they bring what will be done? Ah, I don't like this notion that the product manager is 
possible for for defining product backlog items and that mm -hmm. she or he defines what needs to be done i really like product discovery uh, as defined on tutorials or matic Agan, where we have this product trio so product manager engineer and designer work together to find out when we have this high level goal to find out how we can to discover uh what are the customer needs that we can address and um, what are the how can we solve those problems and what are the assumptions that we can test before selecting anything for the implementation so of course there are other the other departments like marketing like customer success like sales and this is product manager job to engage with them and make sure that the what you are developing works for different part of the business. But I wouldn't say that, that the product manager defines uh, what needs to be done uh, alone. This is the team effort. Okay. Okay. I mm -hmm. like that one. So yeah. it's Marty Kagan that we can learn more about the way that you have this product trio that work together to make mm -hmm. sure that we discover what should be done, right? So yeah. then how do you do it? Could you mm -hmm. give a timeline of how things work? So when you start discovering until you get to like a moment that you can share the roadmap with the people for mm -hmm. the quarter, how does that work? Those topics are definitely connected because product discovery allows us to create a roadmap if we need one. So if we use now, next, later product roadmap, it's not a problem, but if we have some correlation with with the quarters like this quarter next quarter or two quarter from now you really need and at some dates on this roadmap i don't really like but there are sometimes organization demands them so the most important role for me is not to make those commitments too soon so mm -hmm. uh, we need to work with as you said the product trio so designer engineer and product manager um, to find out how we can achieve this outcome, if it is possible to achieve it, because maybe it's there are there is nothing we can do, and this might also be an outcome of the product discovery. And as part of product discovery, we want to address the high risk assumptions. So we want to identify problems, think about solutions, and think what can go wrong in terms of value for the customer, what works for the company, what is technically possible, even some ethical considerations. After conducting experiments, those high risk assumptions should be validated, either proved or disproved, and then we can make what Marty Kagan's called high integrity commitments. So it means that our product backlog items are validated and we more or less know uh, what should be done. Of course, they might be some surprises, but the risk is much lower compared to having a bunch of product backlog items and just selecting them for implementation just to find out that most of them doesn't work. If I could just this risk. stop you for a moment. Uh -huh. So how do you go from high risk assumptions to something that you already validated? How do you validate that? There are many techniques you can use. And uh, this is, for some people in Scrum, this is controversial, but I think that learning by delivering things, because we need to understand that most of the ideas do not work. So even if we have a very strong feeling about what we have proposed and we think that it's a good solution. In most of the cases, there is something that caused this idea to be wrong. Learning by taking them for the sprint and delivering production ready increment and testing if the stakeholders are deploying on production and then measuring the outcomes. This is quite expensive way to work. So we run these experiments um, for for the idea, for the high risk assumptions that we have identified. And there are many techniques you can use. Uh, one of them is by using uh, user prototypes. So you can use tools like Balsamic. You can uh, also create high fidelity user prototypes like Figma. It depends on the risk because if we want to valid validate some assumptions uh, regarding what is technically feasible, like if we can create an algorithm or integrate with another system, we might decide to uh, to have a spike or ra create as Marty Kagan uh, defines it, feasibility prototype. And also another way to, to test our ideas is to develop some small part of the application, but not something that can go to production. And also Marty, Marty calls it uh, live data prototypes. We can use it in, in A-B testing or in 
mm-hmm. opt-in testing. There is a lot of like yeah. theory for me about mm-hmm. how, yeah, this is so great, we can test it. But then it takes <laughs> time and it takes uh, also some budget mm-hmm. because you need to go and find focus group or people that will actually present this. Mm-hmm. Or you have beta customers that you actually have good relationship with. The world depends. Anyway, it takes time. How do you do it usually? Of course, it takes time, but it takes much less time than delivering things and uh, then verifying if they are working. So I think the product discovery, some say that it's like 10% of the of the delivery work. I think it's more like 20%. The cost is still much lower compared to delivering things. And actually, you don't have to find time because the time you save uh, on the delivery, this is, you save more than you need to invest. So how do you make sure that you have stuff ready and discovered mm-hmm. by the given day? Yeah, it's maybe maybe one of the um, common misunderstandings is that you do discovery only in front, do the discovery for, for the whole goal, and then the team starts implementing them, uh, mm-hmm. implementing things that you have discovered. It doesn't work like this. In most cases, you might make some high-level discovery at the beginning, uh, but then you perform continuous product discovery on a weekly basis. So you talk to customers every week, you map opportunities every week, you map, you test assumptions every week. So this is an ongoing activity, not something that you just uh, run <laughs> before mm-hmm. a set of sprints. And then don't and, you have uh, this problem uh, that the mm-hmm. developers say, if I don't see that Figma very well defined, I don't know how to start, so I can start. I think they, we shouldn't we shouldn't start working on the things that are not validated, on ideas that are not validated. And if this is the case, something is wrong with the organization. And Figma, it's it's not only the question of running experiments, but also the UX that should be done mm-hmm. up front mm-hmm. development. Because if we if we start with developing an idea and make some functionality, and then we ask designer to make the this prettier. This is already too too late. The usability will, in most cases, not be optimal or, or will just suck. And uh, the design work must be done uh, before the implementation. There are two topics mixed here. I wouldn't also recommend to run development without discovery. Of course, you can do that, but then you risk that uh, a lot of work that you do uh, will be wasteful and there will be a lot of uh, rework. Uh, required after after every sprint. But going back mm-hmm. to okay, so we have the discovery phase pretty laid out. We understand mm-hmm. that we need to validate before we actually do it, and you do it as you say, like on a continuous basis. So basically, you talk to clients frequently, mm-hmm. and once you have something that you know that will be probably worked on, what happens? How do you create like a roadmap? So you usually products that I recently worked on. The roadmap was not something that I did once in a while, but it was an ongoing activity to mm-hmm. update the roadmap because the, the roadmap um, is uh, it's, it's really the way to... It, yeah, it's, <laughs> you can you can use this uh, Scrum terms. <laughs> yeah, it's a living artifact and um, it shows. So the good roadmap can tell the stakeholders and the organization what is important and what is less important, what is our focus. And what outcomes, what outcomes we we would like to achieve. Uh, so mm-hmm. this is something that I I worked on and update regularly the outcome because there are those outcomes that we care about that might be key results, but uh, also you need uh, to present some high level goals on the roadmap. So the why that will inspire people mm-hmm. and explain why the work we are doing. In this quarter is important and how it is connected to the long-term vision for for the product or or yeah, for the organization it's really not presented on, on the roadmap uh, the, the roadmap should explain how it will create value for the customers how it will create value for the business so this is i, I treat it as a communication tool it's not something that you do just that before some pres- important presentation maria you asked about uh, about tools and to be honest i don't mm-hmm. use any specific tools so i have some okay. uh, because a roadmap is a is a simple artifact this is if you i would like to see your roadmap 
<laughs> because you know whenever i imagine a roadmap i see a uh-huh. kind of chart a timeline and like this goes until yeah. here those two sprints and this goes until there there is nothing wrong with with identifying dependencies between the work that you need to do. and But the problem with Gantt chart is that it's it's often used to create a fiction that we have control over the f- very detailed level granular control over the future. And so it doesn't bring any clarity. And it's, for me, it's just a product management tool. I like the, that you say it's a fiction because I mm-hmm. think what happens in this world of Gantt charts, well, Gantt mm-hmm. charts, you know, even in Jira right now, you can use this road map of epics you know that you can just drag them but what yeah, happens no, is that it. is that what we now need with this mm-hmm. is what you say it's like how do we know that something changed and people start like overly controlling okay this changed and what now and this should be somewhere written and this <clears throat> we should talk about this it, it's yeah, changed it's... again and what now and you know and you start losing control of okay we don't know anymore when this will be done it's hard to accept this uncertainty uh, i agree that it's not comfortable to not, not, not to have uh, control over the future but pretending that we have this, this, this control it might only make those problems worse <laughs> because right. the problems accumulate people think that yeah, we are safe we have a plan we have this gantt chart and we exactly know what when it will happen and <laughs> then then we are when it is not the case the problems appears of course, people might might press and they might they might demand detailed plans. But if you agree to do this, you just create a bigger problem for yourself and for your team in the future. So it it, it doesn't solve the problem; it just moves moves it into the, into the future. So, so if you are going to leave a company in three months, maybe it might be a, a, an idea an idea to. Uh, but in in other cases, it's it, it doesn't help really. <laughs> Hey, I'm planning to to leave the company, so I will create a roadmap for you for three months. My roadmaps are really simple. And yeah, do you have yeah. like an example one? Is, I would like that to show it is, because I think it will help understand what is the alternative for a Gantt mm-hmm. chart. So could you mm-hmm. explain a little bit? So what is visible on this roadmap? The first thing is that there are no deliverables. There are product outcomes. So. Those are outcomes that we can influence, like increasing customer satisfaction on increasing uh, activation rate. Product outcomes might be OKR that we get for for the product team. Okay. Also, there are some some ways how we will what the increasing customer satisfaction means, like uh, increasing NPS or referrals twenty percent. And below this, there are customer needs or customer outcomes. So we have product outcomes at the top that will drive the business results and customer needs that we are going to to address. And if you look closely, customer needs are not features. So for example, customer would like to, this is a product startup validator with some list of the startups that you can browse. But one of the needs is find similar ideas or get, get constructive feedback or feel encouraged. So this is a emotional outcome for the for the person. What's important about it is, yeah, when we, for example, take get constructive feedback, it's not, I would like to have a pop-up that is 600 pixels wide and it appears after I click some button. Yeah, I can drag and drop this this window and it has some additional filters. It's it just the outcomes that customer cares about that we discovered during mapping the opportunities. Yellow cards are opportunities, customer needs that we identified during product discovery. This visible on the top is the product outcome and mm-hmm. there are no features. Another thing that we can see is that as um, that we don't have any, any dates, <laughs> it might be yeah. challenging. So, <laughs> uh, and, and honestly, I like it, but in most cases, I, 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 I treat now as the current quarter and next and as the next quarter and later as, as everything that will be later. And also the level of details decreases over time. So it's not that we have made a product discovery for three quarters ahead. We have some ideas for what might be our future goal, mm-hmm. uh, some future okay, okay that we're working on, but uh, our knowledge about the future is limited. So it's... Yeah, less and less information. And for the later, those are only outcomes. There are even no ideas that how to achieve those outcomes. Okay, so this is totally different from yeah. Gantt chart. <laughs> Have you ever worked in the way that people really are attached to? Like, I need to know. Otherwise, it's a failure if we don't deliver on time. And how would you say could be like an advice 
to mm -hmm. someone to move on to something so vague because in the end this is vague that one is like i know what will be delivered i'm happy mm -hmm. i feel in control here i'm like i have no clue what you will deliver mm -hmm. i don't understand i am not in control why do you need to, to know exact deliverables because I think people think they will need probably some marketing splash and they need to know, mm -hmm. okay, so we need the marketing yeah, team that's... to work ahead as well of the delivery. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's that, that's a good reason. Uh, marketing it might be a good reason that we yeah, some details about what needs to be, what will be released. And sometimes it needs mm -hmm. to be synced in time because marketing is also a question, not, not about why, but, but when. But in that case... I don't think marketing needs to plan anything like six or nine months ahead. It's enough that they will they have some rough idea of what needs what will be done. And for the things that we are working on right now, of course, we won't communicate product outcomes because customer doesn't care that the customer satisfaction will be increased or that uh, we will increase the activation rate. But on a, on a very early stage, then can, they can communicate those needs, those problems that we be addressed. So. For example, that we will really our new release will allow you to get constructive feedback. That we it will allow you a B test your ideas, and you will be able to network with other users of the platform, so and build meaningful relations. So I think that's the, a good marketing is not about features; it's about the the needs and the problems that we will solve. And of course, in sometimes you need yeah, some preview of the design or how the feature will look like and you can do it after in my opinion as a product discovery so after you validate ideas after you test those ideas with with user prototypes uh, you make sure that uh, it is viable mm -hmm. for the business and that our developers can do it so it's not like we can create um, screenshots for something that will be delivered in a year yeah but but, but i think the, the most important thing is that marketing should really focus on on the value that we create for the customers not how this value will be created it's the old type of marketing that that we describe that our product will in the next next release we will deliver 200 features and mm. it's 100 more that we delivered <laughs> last year and who cares mm. about I, I really care that i will be able to 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 connect with others for example in this platform and get feedback and i don't know a b test uh, something and how it will work yeah so that's also like emerging in the quarter that we are now we probably have more information mm -hmm. already and we can start thinking with marketing so they can also prepare their materials based on what will actually be delivered just before we go one more question that i have when it comes to you know communication with the stakeholders i see the most problems arise around the communication so the, if you have a good mm -hmm. roadmap people also know what to expect you know this is about communication and control like i feel in control i feel out of control i don't know what's going on nobody mm -hmm. told me and sometimes things change things slip how do you make sure that they are escalate it in a proper way what's your like escalation <laughs> path or well, like how do you yeah. tell people like hey so you know we were supposed mm -hmm. to do this this quarter but apparently we will be working still in the next quarter <laughs> escalate it it already suggests that this is something wrong i don't think the the change the, in the roadmap is <laughs> it's something that we should always worry about so it's not our consequence well of... it's like the budget you know people plan <laughs> the budget and the yeah. budget now is oh it's double the budget or it's like half 50 percent yeah. more so those are things that <clears throat> you know depending on what comfort of company you are in like sometimes companies are pretty comfortable you can just slip not, yeah. nothing happens but sometimes the budgets are tight and they really want to make them work and these mm -hmm. things make it impossible yeah. to understand right yeah i understand but let's say they they create some budget so budget is in most cases it's uh, mostly people's time in mm -hmm. at least in uh, if we talk if we are talking about software development it's people's so, time but it's also you yeah. know you have something that you want to decommission and you pay for servers and you pay a lot mm -hmm. and then the servers yeah. cannot be decommissioned so imagine yeah. it's like you yeah. hoped to stop paying and you have to pay for three more months and that's a big yeah. deal but a did my team people plus mm -hmm. something else 
Okay, did my team confirm that it can be done or it's just uh, someone has committed to it and informed me about it? Because commit commitment for me is like, it's like a promise that you cannot make others promise you something. <laughs> so it's like, I, I would say, Maria, you, I make you promise me that you will release our our uh, conversation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand this concept, yeah. but I also understand, so, you know, that sometimes people so, feel that they are so pressured that they mm -hmm. just agree just to just to like okay just oh like what, whatever yes i'm afraid yeah. not to agree right so yeah i think mm -hmm. this we are talking a bit about some kind of dysfunctional communication yeah I, companies, but... I, I wouldn't agree on something that i i i'm not sure about so it's important to communicate it openly from the very beginning instead of it's once again uh, making a bigger problem in the future for for the <laughs> for feeling comfortable now and it's it's not the best uh, approach for a for a pm so uh, even if someone tells you that it's important and we need to do it in six months because some licenses will will be gone and we'll have to pay for the servers or something uh, I, I i understand what you are talking to me and we need some time for discovery we will define how to solve this problem and after after we validate a hypothesis and <laughs> validate our backlog we can confirm that that it can be done and when it can be done yeah they may say i don't make promises mm, before i'm i have a high certainty and of course even if you if you validate your hypothesis something unexpected might happen because what you validate is is connected to to the product ideas, but there are also other risks, like uh, some team member may get sick or uh, may change <laughs> might change a job, or they might be in conflict in the team. So you cannot even if you if you have the best ideas and they will all work as expected, you cannot control everything what happens uh, with the work. So in that case, it's important to if you have promised something it's important to communicate it as soon as the problem arises yeah that's yeah, that's so how I the think, situation yeah i think it's also a lot of you know the complexity like we talk about the complexity mm -hmm. versus complicated versus simple that this tag is always complex and you can never know what will happen right apart from people getting sick you can just have some issues mm -hmm. bugs that you never expected because you didn't know yeah. that this is connected with some other service that who knew so yeah i think that's also a lot of like education that's needed for those companies um where people need to understand that we just cannot know <laughs> and this is very hard yeah, and it's it's a role for for the PM. So the 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 PM is is there to communicate with the stakeholders and to make sure they understand the situation. And the worst uh, worst case <laughs> scenario is that PM makes this 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 commitment that someone demands and then starts demanding it from the developers. Yeah. So it's 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 the worst possible anti pattern. Well, I see that you are quite uh, you accepted this reality. You are pretty calm with all of this, given yeah, that it's, it's on <clears> your <throat> shoulders. This all responsibility to make people understand this is not going to be as they wish, probably. Even if you act in your own interest, addressing the problems before they uh, explode in the future. So it's just to have an open communication and uh, be transparent about what might feel wrong, uh, go wrong, and be transparent about uh, the complexity that we may face. If you start making commitments before, because just because you are pressure or making details, plans, and with dates and uh, different deliverables that will be delivered, it feels safe, but in most cases, it, it causes much bigger problems in the future. So it's just a wise thing to do and not to not to not to make those commitments that's a good thing to think about so uh thank you so much for the conversation i think on this note we can finish so people have a uh, food for thought <laughs> about this <laughs> and i think you know it's a problem in so many companies that it's great to yeah i wish everybody had this mindset of yours and i think people can learn a lot from you so thanks a lot for the talk thanks for having me <laughs> bye bye it was a pleasure bye